my goodness, what a weekend of sport we have enjoyed. We have had everything we could have asked for and more. Dan Byrne from Echo Ratings with me. Dan, first of all, let's start with Chris Burton, the man of the moment, because he came into this leg with a huge amount of pressure on his shoulders. He has delivered on every single level. The one that I want to look at, Nicole, now that we have a moment's rest you know after, that was pretty intense. I feel like I need a lie down. We're just off the end of the cross country there. The one that I wanted to look at was one that I mentioned on the commentary which was that is now I think 11 times that he's been the only person to make the time in a CIC three star. Oh. And I mean you're talking about pretty you're talking about big big places like I've got it here. Ack in 2018 this year was 10 that's now 11. You know, and it goes all the way back to Sydney in 2008. Over 10 years, unrepentant in the CCI three star at Sydney. And it runs all the way through. And what's really impressive is it's on so many different horses. Graf Liberty did it um, in 2013 at Blenheim. But you can run through these JB Calypso at Goldburn again in Australia in 2010. And it runs through Holstein Park, Lilani when they won Aachen in 2013. Hartbury, Temp Temperillo. Tem Tempranillo. You have, a bit of, you have a spot of bother with that one, I don't, don't you, I because the double, <laughs> e two L's is a Y, isn't it? That's how you pronounce it. Um, no, I'm pretty sure I'm right. <laughs> I'm sticking with that one. T.S. Jemimo at Chatsworth 2016. Then Cooley Lands twice 2017. Blenheim, and you'll remember that Buccalo. round of Buccalo, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Only ones to make the time. It, but this, this stat starts not making sense anymore. You think I'm just naming horses. The only person to make the time in a CIC three-star. He's and done it again today. He's done it again today. The only one to make the time. Moved him up from fourth going into the cross-country to top the podium. So not only has he topped... The series podium. Chris Burton is the 2018 Event Rider Masters Series champion, but he wins the final leg as well. Now, we talked about this a little bit on the podcast. There was the potential that he was going to win the leg. I mean, you were constantly, all of us were constantly trying to get away from that as a possibility. Uh, not because we didn't think it was the most likely outcome or a very likely outcome, but because you want to keep that excitement around the series going. You want your, your brain naturally goes to the what if, what if. We knew we'd have a poll. If you wanted, could he have had a second pole? And, and you know, there was the potential that he would. Were people going to be better than him in dressage? There was the potential someone like Oliver, who ended up, was better than him, but not not the 22.8 type test that we saw at, at, at Wiesbaden. Um, there was a couple there that, you know, you would have thought they maybe could have pushed on a little bit ahead in dressage. There was people like Wesco and maybe London 52 to some extent that you would have thought maybe they jump a clear round, they push on a little bit more. I think Chris delivered exactly as you would expect. Mid-20s dressage, one pull down inside the time. If ever you can say that it's predictable, that there are three predictable parts of eventing right now with that horse. The stars pretty much aligned for him this weekend, didn't he? Because he did everything he needed to do. And actually, Chris Burton is a pretty cool customer. And there were times that he looked, there was a lot of pressure on his shoulders. You know, there was a lot of expectation. A lot of people thought, you know, he had this series in the bag and it wasn't the case. But he actually led both Tim Price and Laura Collett in each of the phases. He yeah. didn't ever have to come from behind. It was never a sort of a what-if situation. He was always just doing enough ahead of them. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, going back to the speed point, when you've got that cross-country speed up your sleeve, it just means that you've got four or five marks to play with in other parts. And they're so influential. They're so hard to get. Think how difficult five marks is to get into dressage. Like when you look at some of the dressage scores there from the first day, like five marks is covering a wide range of people. And, you know, he, you know, to be able to finish inside the time, make that amount up on everybody. It's something that I think is going to, we're going to see again and again, potentially world championships, certainly at big three stars like Buccalo coming towards the end of the year and definitely across the event rider masters in 2019. You're going to see someone in Chris Burton because he's doing it on so many horses now, even this year alone, Polystar, Quality Purdy and now Graf Liberty, the only horses inside the time. 
it's a huge asset to have, Nicole. It is a huge asset to have. So Chris Burton, the 2018 Event Rider Masters Series Champion, a huge points tally, 126 points made him the Series Champion this year. And he took the final leg here at Blair as well. But if we move on to the tussle for second and third on the Series podium, because actually that was pretty nip and tuck all weekend. Laura Collett came in with five points as a buffer in second place ahead of Tim Price. But Tim was one of the firm leg favourites with Wesco. She needed to finish, realistically, three clear places ahead of him. She did it. He was sixth. She was eighth. But she was close enough. Did it all she could do this weekend. And actually, the pressure was on her because things didn't go to plan for her in the jumping this morning, in the show jumping. It, there is quite a lot of pressure put on them. And, like... We're guilty of it, but, you know, that's our job. Well, you're in it as well. Come on, you're in it as well. It's not just me. But that's a, a sort of our job in terms of making sure people are aware. Like, say, with someone like Camembert. The first thing when I said that, yes, it was a Daisy who was in with us in the commentary, and I said, they're on 19 clear rounds in a row. They're going for 20. Jumping 20, show jumping clear rounds. We said it as well with um, with London 52. He's only rolled one pole in his, if, if, from his 11 internationals to this date. We put pressure on them. And there is no curses. There's no dark arts. You know, it's not. I, I think it's top level sport. You've got to. You've got to. They've deal got with to that. be able to deal with the pressure. And I think that was the thing. If you go back to sort of Chris Burton, he was the favourite. But do you know what? He's still got to deliver. Yeah. And they all have that pressure and expectation on them. Laura has got a new superstar in London 52. There is absolutely no denying that he has been thrown in at the deep end this year. Tim Price and Wesco finished sixth here. And we, he was hot on Laura's heels. He had 102 points. But actually, the one, two, three in the series remained the same here. Yeah, they remained the same. I think you prob there was probably a little bit... It needed a big standout performance from any of them. Or something to go very wrong. Yeah, they probably needed something to go very wrong for one of you know one of yes. the others. So I think you probably needed you know you probably needed something to go wrong for Chris if you were you did need something to go wrong for Chris if you're going to let either or the other two in. But not only that, they probably needed absolutely nothing to go wrong for them in either in any of the phases. Um, even coming in, we had that gap of what was it, ten points, and then another five points. So there were big gaps to close, and I suppose we shouldn't be surprised that. It stayed the same. You know, I'm not I'm I'm not really that surprised that it stayed the same. In terms of the leg this weekend, because actually there was a lot of pressure on a lot of different riders. Chris Burton delivered, he actually took the leg at that speed across the country that we've already talked about. Oliver Townend in second had a pull down show jumping our dressage leader, Kilner Brad Nevo. He'd previously been such a reliable show jumper. If he had a jump clear today, he would have been on top of the podium. Oh god. But the one thing I would say, the last three years here at Blair in the Event Rider Masters, Oliver has been on every single step of that podium. Yeah, 2016 was a big one. I remember that was one of my favourite ones because I think Senor Medicot had two down and a time penalty. It was that last second of the show jumping. Such an influential moment. And then had a run moment. out cross country. Yeah, but the big difference was, you know, Oliver heard it. I always reference that because I always think it was, it, it, it showed how important that last place can be from a tactics point of view. Um, yeah, he's delivered at Blair. And you know what? We've each time we've been guilty of saying, is this a track that's going to suit Kilner Brad Nevo? He's now been one, two and three in strong competitive fields here. So I think he's answered the questions. I'm pleased to see them back on the podium, you know, and I think they'll probably have, they'll, they'll, they'll be out at some point again later in the year once to watch again. I actually think Oliver Townend in 2019 is going to be coming out gunning to regain his 2016 title because he's got a serious amount of horsepower, won the other three-star here as well. And let's face it, he's a man not to be trifled with when he's got that amount of armour. Not to be trifled not, with. <laughs> not to be trifled with. Nothing wrong with that expression. Um, <laughs> third place on the podium. Yeah. Emily Filt. They were 15th here 12 months ago. Camembert, you've already talked about it. Can we just say it again? Because... We know how excited you got when you found this stat of Emily Philp and Camembert in the show jumping because it is quite remarkable. Uh, it is incredible, isn't it? And I, I, I actually was hoping, um, I was hoping that they would be that they'd stay on the podium because if you look at you know if you look at the guys at the top of the podium, I think all of them have even been on podium here previously. Like you they know, have. they were both on the podium here, Oliver and Chris last year. 
And Shane, didn't she? And Shane was on the podium here last year. Yeah. So Shane won, Chris Burton second, Oliver Town, and Cooley Masterclass were third last year. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's great, to be honest, Emily Philp coming in. What's very special about eventing generally and Event Rider Masters as well is, you know, if, if, if you get your chance and you go and you can go and deliver, you can find yourself on that podium. They delivered a very, you know, very strong start, big dressage test. They got their clear round show jump. And clear round number? Number 20. In 20. a row. 20 in a row. They've never had a pole in international competition. They have had some time penalties. But that is just That's remarkable. Yeah, it's brilliant. And then, but look, the big one, how they did it, how they got onto that podium was actually a really strong and really fast cross country Second round. fastest round of the day. Emily, 2.4 time penalties. Yeah. And actually, she was motoring. Yeah, you, I mean, so when we're in commentary, Obviously, you don't see us, and we're just looking at the screen, so we can kind of do what we like in here. There were lots of arms flailing, I yeah, think, as we were. Yeah, started, like, you know, everyone started nudging me and shouting, you know. Like, they'd turn off the microphone and be like, is this horses? Is this normal? Well, look what's going on here. <laughs> you were getting more and more excited. I'm delighted for them that they did that because new face on the podium gives you that gives you that check for the first time that'll go a bit of a way but it also gives you that confidence more important and they've had a really good season they've been so consistent and solid they were 12th at, at Bramham in the long format 3 star you know this is a horse that will likely come out at 4 star next year and big, actually 10th yeah, at, at Chatsworth will be a big one for me yeah in, in the 3 star, star. There, yeah um, they pick up time penalties that day you know what's shown today is maybe that's the ground that suits them you know maybe a course like Buckalo is somewhere that you could begin to see them like Strong cross country, jumping on a surface at Buckle where where it can be influential. I would think, you know, we're gonna see something a little bit special from Camembert. Very pleased for Emily today. Top job. Top job. Definitely top job. One name to take from the series finale here at Blair, Emily Philp, Camembert. Keep an eye on them for the rest of the year and into twenty nineteen. At Dargan, Emily King, they were last out on course as the leaders coming away from the show jumping actually pulled up very early at fence four. It was a pretty dramatic last couple of minutes on the cross country. There was a potential flag contest for Oliver Townend. If he'd missed a flag, Emily King pulled up. Shane Rose is getting time penalties. It was all going on. Emily, hopefully none the worse for wear with that. We'll get some news, I'm sure. But again, she was very impressive in the first two phases. Yeah, and it's heartbreaking when you see that. I, you know, so early in the course to pull up, you know, it, well, well, we don't know yet, so there's no point in speculating as to what it is. But we'll all be hoping that it, it's, it's just the ground, hopefully. Exactly. Because it has been pretty wet. I mean, Scotland doesn't just do a little bit of rain. Yeah, I mean, we it was like this at the Europeans in 2015. Do you remember that? It was, today is actually very similar to that. The rain is absolutely beating down everywhere. It made it tough. It, that Dargan round at the end was something that I was really looking forward to because that cross-country form was probably the last question to answer and they have begun to answer it recently. And and we saw that the CCI, was where was their big CCI result? Bramham, that was under Bramham. 25s. Yeah. So, you know, that stamina is there. You know, I know a different ground, a different track, but, you know, when they show you that CCI result, you're now going back to a CIC on a testing track there's just something there going, hopefully it's in there, hopefully it's in there. Can you jump clear? Because you've 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 had to work so hard to get yourself into that. I've no I've no doubt they will be back and oh, hopefully yeah. we'll see them on an event rider masters podium. Before we talk about our favourite moments of twenty eighteen, okay. because it has been full of plenty of them, what has been your favourite moment of this final leg? Of the final leg. I love uh, stats. I love achievement. Uh, I have to give it to uh, Emily Philp. As you go over the last, you've jumped clear 20 in a row. Um, I know we talked about it, but yeah, for me, I think very special moment. It is a pretty impressive achievement as yeah. well. Not to be underestimated because that takes quite a string of performances to yeah. put together. So, What's yours? Do you know what? I think it was the, the final few minutes of cross country it never never fails yeah. to kind of the adrenaline is going you never know what is going to happen you know we did have the Oliver Town end potential oh missing God, a flag yeah. we had Emily King pulling up out on course we had <laughs> Shane Rose chasing the clock was Chris Burton had secured the series was he going to win the leg it's just so full of drama you never know what's going to happen and I think that's always my favorite bit Agreed. I've got one for you just okay. before we leave the leg talk because I think it deserves a mention. 
Izzy Taylor and Derek Casano. Yes. What's, I mean, that's another big one going just, into their string, isn't it? I just saw Izzy outside, actually, in eight years of age, Derek Casano only stepped up to three star this year, finished in fourth place here, was very fast cross country, lovely clear round in the show jumping, and she said, always oh, rather smart, isn't he? A bit of an understatement. 20, yeah. uh, 2019. Well, what's interesting for me when you look at them, Izzy has be touchable. And I would put that, and it has been on a reasonably similar journey, I would put B-Touchable very close to Mr. Bass. You know, I don't think you'd... There's not a whole lot between them in terms of absolute talent and excitement around them as they go into their, hopefully, into their four-star career soon. But now you've, I would say, Direct Casano and London 52 are both following mm -hmm. up reasonably similar trajectories. London a little bit older than Direct Casano. That's a particularly young horse coming through. But the same amount of excitement. I think you're you're beginning to see what's exciting for me is you're beginning to see Tokyo 2020 Olympics already. Yeah, begin, you know, absolutely. you're starting to think that way. Way too early. We know so much can change. But these are names that I expect all going well. Fingers crossed. Touch yeah. wood and all the things that we'll be we can't control. They're watching. the horses that you'd want to be talking about in years to come. 2018 yeah. has given us pretty much everything we could have asked for. Hopefully, everything you could have asked for at home as well. What's been your favourite? moments over the whole series yeah I actually didn't know you were going to do this give me a minute to think um, looking back Chatsworth I thought was I mean the uh, the piggy French Quarry Crest Echo now on their way to the World Games I think that was a very special start um, and I'm not going to go through Queen not, yeah, I was going to say then you're automatically starting to go through all the legs and you're thinking yeah, Ingrid oh, Klimker and Wiesbaden Ingrid coming the, into the stadium into the stadium where it had all gone so wrong 12 months yeah. previously with Escada but Horseware Hell Bob goes on and does such an impressive performance I think I'm going to give it I think I'm going to give my favourite moment or my certainly my favourite event my favourite uh, experience over the course of a weekend actually to Arville it, I went there not knowing what to expect. I mean, stolen I, my moment. I was going to oh, say, you are real as well. Yes. Yeah, it wasn't a great though. What was your? I mean, it wasn't. It's just special to arrive in a place we'd never been. We didn't really know that much about. No. We were reading da data, and you can get a read on it. But it was an exciting competition. It there was, was a beautiful really, place. Really good field as well, and yeah. it had a castle. Every girl loves a castle. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but, but it, like, it was, was class, just you know? the whole. All of the ingredients came together in Arville, even so much as sort of Bill Levitt getting on the podium, which I think is still one yeah, of my favourite moments. That, yeah, it, yeah. because it just he has been such a part of the series with Shannon Dale Titan. He got his podium finish. Laura Collett, London Fifty Two, bursting onto the scene. Chris Burt and Polly Star inside, inside the, the time. The time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that one had everything. Um, and just a, yeah, a really cool venue. So I'd say that was probably one of my favourites. Um, Upsilon at Barbary, though. Upsilon at Barbary. That I must mean, have been your favourite. Probably pretty close. Yeah, yeah. that was a high It point. would be pretty close because I was very disappointed in Arville for them. And when they returned to Barbary and they got that win, I was... I guess for... I guess Wesco's return at Jardy is also a moment. And for me, actually, not the cross-country, but I think we talked about it on the podcast. The dressage. Yeah. Everybody just felt a bit of a lump in their throat. Tim was pretty emotional. There was just something quite magical about it. Yeah, it was. It. it was special. You know, you had Janelle and Otis standing over on one side of the arena. You had Tim, who loves Wesco as much, maybe just a little bit less than Otis. You know, and he talks about <laughs> Wesco in the same way. You know, he loves him so much. It was, it was emotional for all of us to see just the fact that they're back and they're back together. But then they did the best ever three-star test ever for Tim. I know. On Wesco's return. I mean, if you wanted to write it, like you can write it. You couldn't have written it's it. And amazing. then they finished on it. Yeah. And yeah. It, Alex Bragg won that leg. Yeah. And that, I mean, that was brilliant in itself because he put in a career personal best in the dressage. It has just been a series that has given us everything we could have asked for. Yeah, it's been another great year. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, when you look at some of the horses that are coming through, when you look at the excitement around the series, yeah, I will be. I'm looking forward to next year already. I think you know, it's kind of weird to think it's over. Isn't I know. It? I'm going to go back and watch reruns. You can watch all of the action again from this year. EventRiderMasters.tv. All of the action from each of the legs is available. I think I'll be watching that a bit over the winter. Keep me going until 2019.
Well, yeah, well, good on you. <laughs> and you guys at home can as well. Let us know what your favourite moments of the 2018 Event Rider Masters series have been. Stay in touch with us on social media using Facebook and Twitter. Search Event Rider Masters. Use the hashtag ERM Eventing as well. We hope that you've enjoyed the roller coaster that has been the six legs of 2018 as much as we have. And we really hope that you'll be back to join us again in 2019 because it promises to be bigger and better than ever before. And if it's anything like the last three years, we have got a lot to look forward to. We'll see you then.